two grounds. First, the Supreme Court agreed both with the High Court and the Court of Appeal that the BBI bill was not a popular initiative for the reason that it was commenced by the President who does not hold the position of a citizen under the Constitution of Kenya. Number two, the Supreme Court has agreed with the High Court and the Court of Appeal that there was no adequate public participation insofar as the initiation and the promotion of this bill is concerned. To that extent, therefore, we can say affirmatively that today marks the end of the BBI bill insofar as it has been declared unconstitutional. But what about the question of basic structure? Does that not, or rather did your case not suffer a blow where that is concerned? Well, a soldier is armed with a rifle, a bayonet, a grenade, and a penknife. If you are able to obliterate your enemy with your penknife, then you cannot lament that you didn't make good use of the rifle. And uh, perhaps it is a, a manifestation of the bottom-up approach. We started with many issues before the High Court upon which this bill was declared unconstitutional. Those issues reduced as we went to the Court of Appeal. In the Supreme Court, they have now converged into two fundamental issues. So I can say without any fear of contradiction that today's decision is an epic decision, is a monumental historical decision for the benefit of the people of Kenya. It underscores the fact that the people are the ultimate authority insofar as constitutional amendments are concerned. It also emphasizes one thing. Individuals cannot constitute themselves into Wanjiku, Wamboi, Kamau, Onyango, Nasimiu, and say this is what we want for the people of Kenya. There must be adherence to what the constitution provides insofar as what is good for the people.